Where do the Jewish people really come from? For thousands of years, this question has echoed through history, from ancient temples to modern laboratories. Are the Jews truly the descendants of the ancient Israelites, or do their roots trace even further back, deep into the forgotten tribes and migrations of the ancient Near East? Today, for the first time, DNA is revealing answers that history alone could never tell. And what scientists have discovered is both surprising and profound. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to uncover the hidden genetic story of the Jewish people, a story that stretches across continents, exiles, and millennia. But before we begin, I want to ask you something. Do you believe modern Jews are the direct descendants of the ancient Israelites? Modern DNA research has allowed scientists to go back in time, not through ancient scrolls, but through blood, bone, and ancestry itself. And what they found is remarkable. Most Jewish populations today still carry strong genetic ties to the ancient people of the Levant, the region that includes modern-day Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon, and parts of Syria. Archaeologists have recovered ancient remains from Canaanite and Israelite sites dating back more than 3,000 years. When geneticists sequenced those ancient genomes, they discovered something striking. The DNA of modern Jewish groups shares deep continuity with these early Levantine ancestors. In other words, despite migrations, wars, and exiles, the genetic thread remained unbroken. The early Israelites themselves weren't a single race or ethnicity. They were a mixture of Semitic tribes from the desert, Canaanite peoples from the coast, and migrants from Mesopotamia and Egypt. Over time, their cultures and genes blended. What unified them wasn't only geography, it was an emerging identity built around faith, law, and memory. So even in the ancient world, Jewish DNA was never pure. It was a fusion, Middle Eastern at its core, yet open to influences from surrounding civilizations. This mixed, dynamic origin laid the foundation for what we now see genetically, a shared Middle Eastern base that connects Jewish groups across continents, even today. And as history unfolded, that base would be tested, scattered by empires, reshaped by exile, but somehow preserved. Few stories in human history match the scale and endurance of the Jewish diaspora. After the destruction of the first temple by the Babylonians in the 6th century BC, and later the second temple by the Romans in 70 CE, Jewish communities were scattered far beyond the land of Israel. They moved into Babylon, Persia, Egypt, Greece, and eventually across Europe and North Africa. This was more than migration. It was survival through dispersion. And with it came a unique genetic experiment. How does a people maintain its identity when scattered across the world? For centuries, Jewish communities lived as minorities, often isolated, sometimes persecuted. This isolation led to what geneticists call endogamy the practice of marrying within the community. Families stayed connected through faith and tradition, but also, unknowingly, through DNA. In Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, Jewish communities became small genetic islands, separated from their non-Jewish neighbors by custom, religion, and sometimes law. Over generations, these islands developed distinct genetic patterns, this is where the founder effect comes in. When a small group of ancestors gives rise to a much larger population, their specific genetic traits get amplified over time. The Ashkenazi Jews, for example, likely trace back to a few hundred individuals who lived about 600 to 800 years ago. Despite centuries of growth, the genetic fingerprints of those founders are still visible in millions of descendants today. Yet what's extraordinary is that, Across continents, the core Middle Eastern ancestry didn't disappear. Even in faraway lands, Poland, Morocco, Iraq, Yemen, Jewish DNA still carries that Levantine signal. Scientists found that Jews from vastly different places are more closely related to each other than to their local neighbors. So while geography changed, genetics remembered. This is why Jewish DNA is often described as a story of continuity through separation, 
the genes of exile that never forgot their origin. Over time, three main branches of the Jewish world emerged, each shaped by its own geography, yet united by shared roots. Let's start with the Ashkenazi Jews, whose ancestors settled in Central and Eastern Europe. Their story begins in the Roman Empire, where Jewish merchants and scholars spread northward along the Rhine River. They intermarried slightly with local populations, especially in Italy and Southern Europe, but remained largely distinct. Genetic studies reveal that Ashkenazi Jews carry a mix of Middle Eastern and Southern European ancestry, roughly 60 to 70 percent from the Levant and the rest from early European converts or intermarriages. What makes this group particularly fascinating is the Ashkenazi bottleneck, a period around a thousand years ago when their numbers shrank dramatically, then rebounded. That bottleneck left a unique genetic imprint, making Ashkenazi DNA one of the most studied in the world. Next, we have the Sephardi Jews, descendants of communities in the Iberian Peninsula, North Africa, and parts of the Ottoman Empire. Their name comes from Sepharad, the Hebrew word for Spain. Before the 15th century, Spain and Portugal were home to vibrant Jewish communities that contributed enormously to culture, science, and philosophy. When the Spanish Inquisition forced Jews to convert or flee, many escaped to North Africa, Turkey, and the Balkans, taking their distinct genetic signatures with them. Sephardic Jews today show a strong Middle Eastern ancestry with layers of Mediterranean influence, reflecting centuries of life around the sea that connected Europe, Africa, and Asia. Then there are the Mizrahi Jews, sometimes called Eastern Jews, who remained in the Middle East after the ancient exiles. They lived in Iraq, Iran, Yemen, Syria, and other parts of the Arab world. Genetically, they are closest to the original ancient Israelites, showing the least European influence. When scientists analyzed their Y chromosomes, the markers passed down from father to son, they found deep continuity with the Levantine region going back thousands of years. Together, these three branches form a kind of genetic triangle, different in flavor, but sharing the same ancestral core. Ashkenazi Jews might share more genes with Sephardic Jews from Spain than with non-Jewish Europeans living right next to them. Mizrahi Jews in Iraq may have more in common genetically with Ashkenazi Jews in Poland than with their Muslim neighbors. That's the beauty of it. Across all this distance, a hidden thread connects them. A thread spun from ancient Levantine ancestors, carried through centuries of migration, faith, and memory. Every person carries a kind of biological archive inside their cells. In that archive, scientists can read three main types of genetic information. Y-DNA, passed from father to son. Manti DNA, passed from mother to child. And autosomal DNA, the mix we inherit from both parents. When scientists study Jewish populations using these markers, a clear pattern emerges. Across almost all Jewish groups, the paternal lineages, the Y-DNA, point strongly back to the Middle East. Haplogroups like J1, J2, and E1B1B dominate, and these are the same ones found among ancient Levantine populations and neighboring groups like Druze and Lebanese. This means that most Jewish men today trace their distant paternal ancestors to the same region, the biblical heartland. On the maternal side, the story is slightly different. Many Jewish mtDNA lineages show local origins, meaning that, throughout history, Jewish men likely married women from the surrounding communities who then joined the faith. Over time, those women's descendants became part of the Jewish people, carrying local maternal genes but sharing the same cultural and religious identity. This blend of Middle Eastern paternal and local maternal ancestry created a unique genetic signature that repeats across Jewish populations, from Morocco to Russia to Iran. It's like a melody played in different keys, but always recognizable. Another fascinating part of the science is the shared autosomal DNA, the full mix of genes that reflect all ancestors. Studies consistently show that Jewish populations, regardless of where they live, cluster tightly together in genetic maps, 
forming a distinct group separate from non-Jewish neighbors. Even Jews who have been separated for 2,000 years, like Yemeni Jews and Ashkenazi Jews, still share more DNA with each other than with the people who lived beside them for centuries. That's incredibly rare. Most human populations blend over time. But here, the combination of cultural continuity, religious tradition, and endogamy preserved a shared genome unlike any other. Of course, with that genetic closeness came some side effects. Because of the founder effect, certain hereditary diseases became more common among specific Jewish groups, like Tay-Sachs, Gosher's, and BRCA mutations. These conditions don't define Jewish DNA, but they reveal how a small ancestral base can magnify specific traits across generations. At the same time, some researchers point to genetic advantages, not in a mythic sense, but in how tight community networks, education, and resilience shaped both culture and survival. Jewish history shows that genetics and identity don't exist in isolation. They evolve together. Science can trace the genes, but only culture explains how they endured. Modern technology has now made it possible for individuals to explore their own ancestry. DNA testing often reveals hidden Jewish roots, especially among people from Spain, Portugal, or Latin America, where descendants of conversos, or forced converts, still carry the genetic echo of their Sephardic ancestors. When you step back, the picture that emerges is astonishing. The Jewish people, spread across continents, languages, and empires, still carry within them the genetic heartbeat of the ancient Israelites. It's not a matter of purity, but of persistence. Not isolation, but endurance. From the sands of Canaan to the streets of Warsaw, from Babylon to Baghdad, from Spain to New York, the DNA tells the same story. A people who carried their homeland within them, even when they had none. That's why Jewish DNA feels so unique. As centuries passed, Jewish communities became part of the vast movement of civilizations. Merchants, refugees, scholars, wanderers, carrying with them the memory of a homeland written in prayer and blood. With every journey, their DNA collected whispers of the lands they passed through. When the Romans scattered them, some followed trade routes into Italy and Greece, leaving traces of their ancestry in the Mediterranean basin. Others moved along the Silk Road into Persia and India, forming communities like the Cochin Jews and Bene Israel, whose genes still show a blend of Middle Eastern and South Asian roots. In North Africa, Jewish traders crossed into Morocco and Tunisia, absorbing slight Berber influences while retaining their Levantine signature. Even when intermixing occurred, the underlying pattern remained surprisingly stable. A shared Middle Eastern ancestry connecting Jews from Yemen to Spain, from Ethiopia to Poland. Genetic studies show that modern Jews are often more closely related to each other than to their geographic neighbors. A Moroccan Jew and a Russian Jew though separated by thousands of miles, share more DNA than either does with local non-Jewish populations. Today, DNA technology has turned ancestry into something deeply personal. Many people take tests and find Jewish roots they never knew existed. Descendants of Sephardic conversos in Spain and Latin America, crypto-Jews in Portugal, or families in Africa and Asia rediscovering ancient ties to Israel. For them, Genetics becomes a bridge, not just to heritage, but to belonging. Yet the science also raises difficult questions. Can DNA truly define who is Jewish? Judaism has always been more than lineage. It's faith, culture, and choice. Genetic studies can trace migrations and common ancestors, but they cannot capture belief or the spiritual continuity that held the people together through exile and return. What's undeniable is that modern genetics confirms what history and faith have always claimed. Despite centuries of dispersion, the Jewish people remain one extended family, bound by threads both visible and invisible. Across thousands of years, it has said the same quiet truth. You can scatter a people, but you cannot erase their memory. The story of the Jewish people is unlike any other. From ancient Israelites and Babylonian exiles, to Roman dispersions and global migrations, 
Every chapter has left a trace in the Jewish genetic code. Across thousands of years and countless lands, that shared DNA has carried not just ancestry, but identity, memory, and survival itself. If you've enjoyed this journey into the DNA of the Jewish people, let us know in the comments. Have you ever taken a DNA test and found Jewish roots? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your family name or traditions passed down through generations. Share your story. We'd love to hear it. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more deep dives into ancient DNA and human history, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching. Shalom and goodbye for now.